This is Dr. Tuckman. I'm going to be presenting a basal joint arthroplasty using grip plasty. I have no financial disclosures regarding this device. Grip plasty is an all suture, suture suspension arthroplasty device. It has the advantage of having very strong fixation at the base of both the first and second metacarpals. Patient is a 72 year old male with stage three, possibly stage four, basal joint arthritis. He failed injections of cortisone and bracing. He was indicated for an arthroplasty. The basal joint is marked. The incision is started at the radial base of the first metacarpal, almost at the junction of the glabrous and non glabrous skin. The incision is then taken dorsally. Procedures performed with sedation as well as a median nerve block, as well as a superficial ring block over the radial aspect of the wrist. The incision is made. The dissection is then taken down to the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis tendons. Tendon sheaths are entered and released both proximally and distally. The retractor is replaced deep between the two tendons. The dissection is then taken down with identification of the deep branch of the radial artery. Tissues are mobilized superficially over the artery. Small branches of radial artery go into the joint or divided and cauterized. The artery is mobilized. Capsulotomy is performed starting at the base of the first metacarpal extending over the trapezium. Subparousal dissection of the trapezium is then performed. It's very important when removing the trapezium to get as many of the capsular attachments off the trapezium as possible. Attention is then taken to the radial side of the trapezium. The capsule is elevated. The scaphotrapezo joint is entered. A freer is then used to retract the first metacarpal. It's important to go around the corner on both the scaphotrapezial joint and the trapezial first metacarpal joint. Freer is then placed distal and ulnar to release that corner. The trapezio trapezoidal joint has to be completely released as well. This is a McGlamory elevator. It's excellent for removing carpal bones. You start distal ulnar and there's more of a levering action as opposed to a pushing action. You can go proximal as well as distal. Sometimes the trapezium will pop out on its own. Sometimes you have to use a rongeur. Uh, Twisting action will uh, break up any remaining soft tissue attachments. You want to palpate the arthroplasty space. You want to make sure there are no remnants of the trapezium, as well as you want to palpate the space between the base of the first and second metacarpal to ensure there are no loose bodies or remaining portions of the trapezium. The first guide wire is inserted. The articulation between the trapezoid and the second metacarpal is identified, and the guide wire is inserted. The starting point and trajectory of this K wire is very important. Typically start five to seven millimeters distal to the second carpal metacarpal joint at the distal aspect of the articular surface with the trapezium and aim 45 degrees distal. You don't want to aim too distal because that will make it harder to pass the anchor through the second cortex. If the angle is too low, you will not be able to pass point the inserter to deploy the anchor. The inserter needs to go seven millimeters past the second cortex. 
You also want to raise your hand so the wire does not end up dorsal. You want the anchor between the metacarpals, not on the dorsal aspect of the second metacarpal. The parallel guide is then inserted and a second K-wire is inserted. K-wire is placed through both the proximal and distal cortex. You can get a floral shot at this point to ensure that your K-wires are parallel, but it's not necessary. Guide sleeve is then removed. Cannulated drill is then used to drill both the proximal and distal cortex. It is also cycled a few times to remove any debris. The grip plasty T-handle is then used to insert the anchor. It's important to insert the anchor that has an eye on it for index metacarpal. There's a hole in the inserter for the guide wire. Anchor is then inserted. Make sure that it follows the same trajectory as the prior K-wire. Gently mallet the anchor through the tunnel. Important not to pass point too far. Fluoroscopy is used to confirm the inserter is seven millimeters past point to allow for appropriate anchor deployment. Gentle traction is placed on the inserter to confirm anchor seating. Cover is removed, sutures are removed, and the inserter is removed. Traction is then placed on the sutures to seat the anchor and the guide pins removed. I got this trick from my partner, Andrew Greenberg, who uses a McGlamory to elevate the base of the first metacarpal to aid in anchor insertion. The first metacarpal is abducted and flexed. This helps get the insertion point, which is at the junction of the volar and middle third at the base of the first metacarpal and at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. Fluoroscopy shows a good starting point. You want to start as radial as you can get on the base of the first metacarpal and angle 45 degrees to the long axis. Now, just like on the base of the second metacarpal, the parallel guide's inserted. It can be placed either ulnar or dorsal. I like placing it dorsal. I don't think there's a big difference though between the two. Second K wire is inserted bicortically. The fluoroscopy shot to confirm your K wires are parallel and your second K wire is bicortical. Sleeves removed. Drill is used as well bicortically and cycled a few times to declare any debris. Sleeve is removed. The anchor is inserted. K-wire is passed through the guide hole in the inserter. Make sure that you're placing that as parallel as possible to the guide pin. Seven millimeter pass pointing with the inserter is confirmed. Gentle traction is placed on the inserter to confirm seating. The cover is removed, sutures are removed and then the inserter is removed. Traction is placed on the sutures, deploying the anchor, and you can see how strong these anchors are. You can easily lift the entire weight of the hand. The sling is deployed. Your assistant can hold the blue sutures and then toggle back and forth on the white sutures that deploys the sling to the base of the second metacarpal, giving some good traction to confirm deployment. Sleeve can then be pulled radially. The thumb is positioned in full adduction and just enough traction to bring the base of the first metacarpal to the insertion site of the anchor in the second metacarpal. Suture is tied. and then cut with a very dull scissor. The retractor is then positioned superficial to the abductor pollicis longus. The insertion of the abductor pollicis longus is then identified and dissected. 
so the blue sutures can be passed. The blue sutures, which are the second portion of the sling, are then passed in a horizontal mattress configuration to the base of the abductor pollicis longus. I use one suture as opposed to passing each suture uh, through individually and having the knot superficial. I like passing one through and then back to have the knot on the deep surface of the tendon within the arthroplasty space so you don't have a big knot stack which is superficial and can be irritating. The thumb is positioned in abduction and the suture is tied. The sling is inspected, appropriate amount of tension is confirmed. Thumb is loaded, confirming stability. Final fluoroscopy shots show acceptable arthroplasty space with no evidence of over-tensioning or under-tensioning. Patient is then placed in a form-based thumb spike a splint. They can begin occupational therapy at one week post-op, have a custom-molded hand-based thumb spike a brace made, begin full active and passive range of motion, wean from the brace at week three to four, strengthening at week six, and typically week eight, return to full activity. Thank you for watching this video. I encourage you to leave comments and let me know what you think.